What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. So it's finally here. This is the Creality K1 Speedy. This is Creality's new 3D printer that is supposed to compete with the Bamboo Labs P1P. Now, like some of you, I did pre-order this and I'm actually surprised that it came so early. I wasn't expecting this till the end of the month. And in addition to this, I'm also planning on pre-ordering the K1 Max because it has a lot more features and a larger print bed. So that's something else that I'm going to be reviewing as soon as I get that, uh, which should be probably in the next month or so, hopefully. So in today's video, we are going to be unboxing this, setting this up, and seeing how well it does on its first print, just to get an idea of how good this printer is and if it lives up to all the hype. Now this printer is supposed to compete with Bamboo Labs P1P. Now I don't have a P1P but I did place an order for one recently and it should be here within the next week. So at some point I'm going to do a comparison video and put them side by side to see how well they compare to each other. Now as most of you that have been watching this channel know, I do have the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon which I've been using as my primary 3D printer since I received it. It's my go-to printer. I do also have the FL Sun V400, which I do use when I have larger prints. However, I have found that the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon is still a little bit better. So in today's video, we will see how well the Creality K1 performs and how it stacks up against the other 3D printers that I have. And then when I get the P1P, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to see which one's better. So with that in mind, stay tuned and we'll check this thing out. Okay, so first things first, Creality is not sponsoring this video and I did buy this printer on my own. So you can expect that I will tell you what I do like and what I don't like about this printer. In fact, I wasn't expecting this printer until the end of the month, so I'm super excited that it got here early. Now currently, this printer is priced at $599 on Creality's website, and then the K1 Max is going to cost about $970. So quite a price difference between the two models. Now if you want one for yourself, I will leave a link to it in the description section below. So again, this K1 Speedy is supposed to be Creality's answer to Bamboo Labs P1P and is supposed to compete directly with that printer. So let's go ahead and start by unboxing this to see what we get. Now as you can see, I am running out of space in my studio for all these 3D printers. So eventually I'm going to have to find a solution uh, for where to unbox these and where to store these printers as I've got a few more that are on the way that I'm going to be unboxing and uh, reviewing for all of you. So let's go ahead and start by unboxing this to see what comes in this and then set it up to see how easy it is and then how well this thing works. Uh, Okay, so as usual, I'm going to put this on the floor so I can remove the printer itself. So like most printers today, it does come packaged with a lot of insulation to protect the printer itself. And I mean, who wouldn't, especially when you're paying upwards of $500 to $1,000 for each of these printers. Okay, so the first thing you get uh, looks like it's the top of the printer, as well as some stickers, which is something new, which is pretty nice. You get this uh, quick installation guide and instruction manual as well as, I guess this is a card that certifies that this thing has been tested. So it's a pretty colorful and thick manual which is always nice to have. And then you get these cool little stickers which you can use to customize the printer I guess itself. So it's all these stickers that just promote 3D printing as well as the Creality brand. So pretty cool, I do like it. Uh, so it looks like it's got a space theme to them. Uh, so definitely gonna be using these stickers somewhere. Uh, so pretty nice. Okay, you also get uh, the after sale service card. So this is your warranty. Uh, and because you know, you're paying a lot of money, you wanna fill these out just so you can make sure that your printer is covered. And it's nice that the top of the printer can fit in this extra large Ziploc bag and then is wrapped as well just to make sure it doesn't get scratched or damaged during shipping. Uh, so let's remove this. 
And let me know in the comment section if you prefer me to pre-film these videos or if you would prefer me to live stream these unboxing uh, videos. I know some YouTube reviewers are live streaming these so that you can also answer questions and so that the session can become interactive. But let me know in the comment section which ones you prefer. Uh, so there is a barcode at the top which you can scan to learn more about the printer itself. Uh, I assume it just takes you to Creality's site um, for the K1. And it looks like there are magnets in this to connect it directly to the printer. So I'm sure this is easy to attach and remove, but holds pretty securely because it is magnetized. Okay, and of course then we get the printer itself, which again is got a lot of padding to secure it in place. Okay, so the printer does come fully assembled uh, without the lid, of course. And as you can see, it is enclosed just like the P1P. Now I will start off by saying that the K1 Speedy does weigh a little bit less than the X1 Carbon. Um, however, not by that much. Now, when it comes to the K1 Max, that's probably gonna be weighing about the same as the X1 Carbon, or maybe even more just because it's got a larger build volume. But we'll see when that printer arrives. Okay, so again, at first glance, this is secured. It has a lot of tape and stickers and styrofoam just everywhere just to protect the printer from moving. But overall, build quality-wise, it does seem very sturdy and durable. In fact, I think the sides are made of aluminum, uh, which is a little bit different. It's either aluminum or this metallic heavy, but it does feel like aluminum. So a little bit thicker and more durable build quality than the X1 Carbon, I believe. Uh, but we'll see uh, as, as soon as we take some more of this stuff off. So we'll go ahead and take the tape off that's holding the door closed first, which is also gonna peel off the front. Uh, film that's protecting the glass. Okay, and of course it does remind you to switch from 230 volts to 115. Of course that depends on the region you live in. Okay, so by default it does come switched to 230 volts, so I'm gonna have to switch it to 110 just because I live in the United States where that's the standard. And if you look at it, it is very deep within there. So you're gonna need something thin to stick in there to kind of adjust it. So let me find a pin and I will... Okay, so I'm going to use a combination of my flashlight and this thing to switch the voltage. And there, we're switched to 115 now. So that's important uh, to make sure you switch it to the right voltage for your region. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and continue. So if you look at the back of this printer, it does look a little bit like the Bamboo Labs printer. Um, except without the poop chute and it's actually fully enclosed, but the feeder tube is uh, on the back as well. Can you take the protective film off? Better when it comes to fingerprint proofing, but of course it still does catch fingerprints, but not as bad as, you know, like other surfaces that I've had seen in the past. Okay, uh, opening this, let's see how this works. Okay, so at the top, okay, so at the top of the printer, Remove that and you've got your power cable. Uh, looks like these are the feet. So they've got rubber feet. So these little feet here, so there's four of them. So I'm assuming these are the feet for the printer itself. And then of course I do like the look of the belt itself on this printer. It just looks pretty cool. Okay, so we'll just move that over. Okay, and then inside the printer, let's see what this stuff is. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, it looks like a box full of the hardware. All 
All right, so you do get a little pin for cleaning the uh, extruder tubes. It does come with a cutter, which is pretty nice. Always happy when 3D printers come with tools. You've got your set of wrenches, and this is a, actually a pretty nice looking wrench set right here. So, you've got two screws, you got a little screwdriver. So this is a flathead screwdriver. Two screws are still in here. Uh, hex wrench set, which is pretty durable looking. So very nice, I like that. And then you get your different size hex tools uh, for the various different things that you can unscrew, screw on the printer itself. You get your generic USB key. Uh, so this is 16 gigs. Uh, looks pretty nice, but I always you know, replace these after a little while. You get a wrench, uh, again, pretty nice and durable, thick looking wrench. Get your scraper, your 3D scraper, which is plastic. I'm probably gonna hold on to this box so I can store all these tools and keep them together. So we'll just put these aside. And then you also get your starter filament, which looks like it's, uh, this is PLA white, uh, just a little spool of filament. Now one thing that got me a little bit overexcited, but then also a little disappointed was, you know, because this is a pre-order, uh, they did have a promotion where you'd get two free sets of filaments. So when it did ship or I got a shipping notification, it said that this printer was shipping it on its way. So I was assuming that I was gonna get my printer two weeks ago, but I actually ended up just getting the two sets of filament instead and not the printer itself. And then when the printer shipped, I didn't get a tracking number for that. So I was actually disappointed that I didn't get the printer as early as I thought I would because I already got a tracking number. But then I assumed that this would come at the end of the month. Now when they actually did ship this printer, I didn't get a tracking number for that. So I'm actually excited and surprised that it came a week after I got the filament because I did expect this at the end of the month after our the first shipment ended up just being the filament itself. So both a little bit excited and disappointed at the same time. But, but overall, I'm actually kind of happy that the printer did arrive earlier than expected and the filament is here as well. So definitely a great job on Creality for that and super excited now that I have the printer in my hands. Now when it comes to the complimentary filament for pre-ordering this printer, I will say probably everyone will get a different experience because they did say it would be a random uh, spool of filament. For me, I ended up getting this PLA white as well as another PLA white. So this is the EN PLA and this is a CR PLA. I guess one Ender and then one Creality. Um, let's see what's the difference between these. So not much of a difference actually, they're just both PLA, so two PLA whites. Uh, so it may be different for everyone else because I think they just randomly grab some filament and throw it in um, and ship it to you. Okay, so back to this. So again, this is the small uh, little spool of starter filament, which again is that PLA. And what is this? So this is the screen, uh, so the screen comes separate, and then this is the spool holder which attaches to the back. So let's go ahead and connect the screen. Before applying power, please check the in. So lots of reminders to make sure you check the input voltage and make sure you switch it to the correct one for your region. And then also make sure that you Check that the three platform board fixing screws have been removed to avoid damage to the machine. So there are some screws that you're going to have to remove. And then I assume you just take this little cable, which you need to pull out, and plug it into the back. And I assume it can just fit one way. Okay, so I'm sure this will probably fit one way. Uh, so we will attach it. And I wish this cable was a little bit longer so you would have a little bit of give. Make it a little easier to connect this. You want to make sure you press it in until you hear the clicks. Which I guess indicates it's secure and then you hook it on. 
I don't know if you click it or what. And I guess you know it's in place when the glass doesn't scrape it. So as you can see, the glass is cut a little bit to make room for the screen itself. So I'm not exactly sure if that's the best placement for it, but you know, you just add, put a little pressure to it until it, the glass doesn't scratch it, I guess, or make contact with the screen itself. So I'm gonna assume it's secure in place. So also on the front, there is a USB port, uh, which is where I think you plug the USB key. So we'll see. All right, so next we'll go ahead and open this and take out this, which I guess is holding the plate down. And then we'll take off the protection film off of the build plate itself. Okay, so this is a smooth surface uh, plate, which is nice. It's magnetic. Uh, it's got little places that tells you where you should put your finger. It does say, please apply glue before print. Now, I'm not a big fan of adding glue, and that's what I appreciate. That's why I got the textured PEI plate for the X1 Carbon, is so I don't have to use glue. So it's a little discouraging to have to go back to glue, but I'm hoping that Creality will also have a textured plate that we can purchase uh, that we can use for this printer as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back. So what's nice is that there are two screws at the back of the plate so you can line the plate up with these notches on the plate itself. Uh, so you know that you've got a good placement of the plate itself uh, when attaching it to the build plate. Okay, and so what's also nice is that there are three arrow stickers inside the printer that tells you which screws need to be removed before you actually turn this thing on. So that's also nice as well. But I'm also sure that the information is in your quick installation guide, which I should technically go in and read before actually setting this up. Okay, so again, this is the uh, spool holder. So just screws into the back of the printer itself. I wish it would have been built on top of it, but I mean, I guess no problem if it's in the back. I do hope that at some point though, that you know, some of you creative people will create you know, different placement areas for these spool holders because you know, I think this just requires us to have more space when placing this. And as you can see, I don't have as much, that much space anymore. Okay, so now that we've gone through and done our own thing about setting this thing up, let's actually go through the instruction manuals to make sure that we aren't missing anything. Okay, take out the power cord. Install the top cover. Which, yes, is magnetized. Um, and there is this gap in the back to allow for the the tube to the filament tube to go through it without actually hitting anything so that's pretty nice okay so let's go ahead and remove those tension screws inside the printer I'm gonna turn it towards me a little bit just so it's a little bit easier and the door does actually close on its own a little bit so I don't know if it's designed like that but you know we'll see let's figure out which one of these little hex We'll need. Okay, I'm gonna assume it's the silver ones that we need to remove. So let's go ahead and remove this. Okay, so there's one. Let's remove this sticker. Well, let's, I don't know if I should remove the sticker or not. Let's just go ahead and remove these stickers. So that's one screw. Okay, let's remove the others. Then the final screw, which I probably need to remove the cover for. Okay, it doesn't actually say what this thing is. So I assume this is probably supposed to manage these cables at the back. Uh, so, it fell off or not? I'm not sure what's going on here. So 
So if you look at the back, there is supposed to be this little, these little cable management things. And this is the plastic thing that came off and was on the side. And this is supposed to stick out a little. I don't know if it's supposed to be here. This is the bed cable, so maybe it's supposed to stick here. So I'm gonna put this back in place to protect these cables. Got all this grease everywhere. But I foresee this probably popping off some. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to secure it or not, but we'll see. Okay, so for now I guess I'll just place this on the top, but it's not necessarily securing very well. But yeah, if you look at it, the alignment for the lid is off. So as you can see, the alignment is a little bit off here at the top, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be. So if I'm supposed to just place it there and it's not supposed to be flush and you know, all the bolts are supposed to be in each of the holes. But let me know what your experience is for those of you that ordered this K1 uh, Speedy, if y'all are having seen the same issue with the, the lid. But what it does say is for the lid is when printing low temperature filaments such as PLA and flexible filaments, remove this clear top cover. Uh, you're supposed to use this cover when printing high melting point filaments such as non-PLA and non-flexible filaments. So the roof is optional depending on the material that you are printing with and the temperatures that which you're printing at. But for me right now, it's not very align it's not aligning very well. So let me know if you have the same experience with your Speedy and you know if you were able to figure out how to get this on, what your solution was. Okay, uh, so first things first, let's go ahead and install the app. Uh, so you can install the app if you need, um, but for now we're not gonna use it. And the instructions didn't really say you know how to install these feet, so let me take off this top real quick and see what these feet are all about. I think these are supposed to reduce. So these feet just kind of slide onto the bottom of these and I think that's for vibration uh, to help at least with the vibration. So that's actually pretty nice that this printer comes with these little feet because for my X1 Carbon, I actually did have to buy some just to reduce the overall noise and vibration that the printer had. So it's nice that, you know, this printer comes with these. So of course to install, all you do is lift it up and slide the feet in. And that's it. Okay, so I've put those in there. And there's this extra cable here that's stuck on this window, which I'm not sure what that is but it looks like you can install additional items. Not sure if that's for the camera or, you know, accessories, but we'll see what that is. Uh, it doesn't say what it is on the instructions. Okay, and just going through this, the reason why this thing is so thick is just because the instructions are in different languages. So that's that. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and put the top back on and turn this printer on. Okay, so now that it's all set up, I'm going to plug it in. All right, so now it's plugged in and going through the setup. Now I will take the filament that I received. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and take this filament that I received and install that in this printer. Okay, so this is the PLA white. Okay, and then you just uh, install it in the back and feed it through the open tube. See if there's anything special I need to do. Okay, you cut the filament until it cannot be moved. Okay, so it can't be moved anymore. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and set this printer up. So we'll follow the instructions. We will press English as our language. 
Uh, remove the three screws A, B, C according to the location, the yellow arrow. So we've done that. And then it says, welcome to Creality 3D Printer. Please keep blue cube in the diagram. Clear of debris and click OK. Okay, so that's the inside of the printer itself. Okay, so we're going to go through and set up our network. Okay, so set up our network. Okay, so it is. Okay, so now that we've set up the network, and I will say the screen, the text is very small, very hard to see. It's not that easy to navigate, um, but got it set up. So not too bad. Time zone, I think I'm in, I wanna say, what am I? I think it's that one. Next. Okay, so Creality Cloud app to scan the barcode to bind the device. Okay, so I will need to get my phone and scan it. Reality K1. Okay, it says connect the camera to the device. Okay, so now that that's added to the app, I'll click next and then self inspection. Welcome to the self check process. Please place the printing platform. Please place the printing platform one. So I'm not understanding what that means. And then the self check process is expected to take and then it does not say anything. Uh, so I guess the instructions here can be a little bit clearer uh, because it doesn't make sense. But let's click on start detection. So it's doing its self inspection. So right now it's nozzle heating, hotbed heating, and just going through the different phases. So let's let it do that. Let's go through the setup. Okay, so it is slowly raising the bed. Uh, I will say that it is kind of slow, but it is fairly quiet, the printer. I mean, it's quieter than the Bamboo Lab so far, but we'll see what it sounds like when it actually starts printing. Oh, and there is a styrofoam in there that I do need to remove, looks like. From the bottom. So it's on the input shaping portion of the test, which I'm not sure what that means. And I assume it's gonna do the auto leveling. So it looks like the head is shaking a little bit. I guess input shaping means that it's doing the vibration and noise test. So I assume it's just doing a calibration right now. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's revving up again. So it's testing the vibrations and calibrating the, the unit itself. Okay, so now it's doing the auto bed leveling. Uh, so again, it's doing that on its own. Okay, so while it's going through and continuing its self inspection and bed leveling and everything, uh, just really quickly, again, this has a max speed of 600 millimeters per second, so just slightly better than the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. Um, it's got a head acceleration, print head acceleration of 20,000 millimeters, so again, pretty fast uh, transport rate for the print head itself. Um, Hands-free leveling, which is always something that's nice to have. Uh, the print size is just a little bit smaller, um, but I guess, you know, with the K1 Max coming out, that's going to have a pretty large print bed area. So uh, depending on, you know, what you're looking for, you can either go for the Speedy or the Max itself, um, which Speedy has a smaller print area than the Max. And I will say it is pretty loud. Uh, when the fans do kick in as you can hear. So that's a downer of course. 
Uh, it is faster, but it is also louder. Okay, so it is now doing the bed leveling. And I did confirm this is a die cast aluminum frame. Uh, so, you know, very durable and very sturdy, which is something that I like. You know, I just like the look and the feel of this printer itself. I'd say my biggest qualm off on the offset right now is really just the alignment of the top lid as well as, you know, how loud it is. Um, you know, I've also gotten used to the fact uh, that the uh, Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon does have an AMS, but who knows, maybe something like that will come out for this in the future. Um, and then of course this does have a smaller print bed size, so, you know, that's something else that I like. Uh, the bamboo for because it does have a larger print bed size um, That might be solved when the K1 max arrives, but for now um, you know, That's probably my biggest complaint especially if you're comparing it to the P1P which has the same print bed size as the X1 carbon Okay, so we'll come back once it's done doing the self-inspection and the bed leveling and we'll go ahead and test out how well this thing prints and you know, let's put it to the test. Okay, so now that the calibration is done, let's go ahead and click OK there. I like the interface. I mean, aside from the size of the text on the initial setup, I do like the interface. There is a grid that tells you how well it's performing and there's just a lot of information uh, on the screen itself. Um, so let's go ahead and try to print, test print something. Uh, let's do the Benchy and see how well that turns out. So we'll go ahead and print and do that calibration. Start with that calibration and see just how fast it is. And we won't actually time it until we actually do the calibration itself, but um, we'll start when it actually starts printing the uh, Benchy itself. So it's gonna do its initial calibration as usual. And I'll just get my phone with my timer ready. Okay, so we'll put this out here and we'll time it once it starts printing. And I'm gonna use the default settings uh, just like I normally always do to see how well it does. Probably should have put some glue on the print bed, but we'll see how well it does without the glue itself. Okay, so as usual, we will go ahead and start the timer once the calibration is done so we can test how fast it can print the Benchy and also see what the quality is like uh, by using the default settings as usual. Okay, so for the first print, I did initially have an issue with the uh, print itself uh, because the print head was not extruding filament. So I went back and checked the filament, made sure I pushed it in more, and then I went through the settings and manually extruded some filament. So hopefully that will fix the issue. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and try again, the first print to see how well it works. And as you can see, this K1 Speedy completed the Benchy in a little over 17 minutes, which is slightly faster than the X1 Carbon, which finished in about 19 to 20 minutes. Now I will say though that I did run into a few problems with the first few prints, and it did take me some time to figure out how to get this thing to work, because the first two attempts didn't even print, and I could not for the life of me figure out why. In fact, it was only after I watched one of the many videos available on the included USB key that I noticed that there was a silver switch here at the top of the printer which locks the filament tube in place. Now by default, from the factory, this filament tube lock up here was in the unlocked position from the factory, which means that it only feed filament if I was pushing at it from the back. 
After watching one of those videos, I decided to move it to the lock position and I was able to extrude filament normally. So FYI, if you run into that problem where your print won't start printing because it wouldn't extrude filament, make sure that you check to see if that lock switch is in the locked position. Now another thing that I noticed while testing this printer out, and you might have seen it during the footage, that was so frustrating, is that the bed itself moves very slowly. So hopefully that's going to be something that's fixed and addressed through a software update, and also in the K1 Max. That alone made the calibration and even starting to print extremely slow. Now one thing I found that was nice was that I didn't even use any glue stick on the build plate itself and the print still adhered pretty well. Now that's not to say that you won't have to use a glue stick at all because some prints might need it for adhesion. Now going back to the print quality itself, as you can see from this benchy right here that we finished printing on this printer, it did turn out very nice. In fact, the layer lines are barely noticeable. However, I do still think the print quality is slightly better on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, but only by very little. Now I'm pretty sure after a few more tweaks to the printer itself, these prints will turn out amazing. Now going back from a specs perspective, overall this printer again can print at a 600 millimeter per second max print speed with pretty good results as you can see from this Benchy. This of course is variable depending on what you're printing. It's also got a travel speed of 800 millimeters per second and comes with a flexible build plate and a unibody die cast frame, which is always nice. The LCD itself is a 4.3 inch touchscreen with some pretty amazing colors. And I also like that it shows the status of the print by coloring in it as it completes. Now, the only complaint that I do have with the LCD screen, it was early on during setup where the text could be a little larger so that it would be easier to see. But that's only a minor issue and something that's not very much of a showstopper. Now I also do like that this has a dual cooling system which helps to improve print quality and adhesion. So that's also a nice feature about this printer itself. Although the printer does get pretty loud. I also like the fact that the printer has a self test and self leveling functionality. But I will say it is a little bit slower than I'd like and hopefully again that it gets better over time. Now this particular K1 Speedy does have a print bed volume of up to 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is a little bit smaller than the K1 Max, which comes in at around 300 millimeters all around. Now that print bed size is definitely going to be a little bit larger than the Bamboo Lab X1C and the P1P. Now from a Speedy perspective, the print bed size is going to be smaller. So if you want a larger print bed size, then you're definitely going to want to go with a Max. And then upon inspection and just looking through the printer itself, the Speedy does not seem to have a LiDAR AI and some of the more advanced features that the K1 Max has. And I also didn't see a camera anywhere. It does, however, have the remote print capabilities, which is something that I love about the, all these new 3D printers. So again, if you want all those features, you're definitely gonna wanna wait for the K1 Max. Now what's also nice, if you're thinking about getting the K1 Speedy or the K1 Max, is that if you pre-order right now, you do get two free random PLA filaments that Creality will send you. So that makes this a pretty nice deal. Uh, just makes it a little bit sweeter. Now overall, the K1 Speedy does do an amazing job and does perform exceptionally well. But for now, I still do prefer my X1 Carbon over this printer. It does, however, excite me and makes me anticipate even more the arrival of the K1 Max which could potentially give the X1 Carbon a run for its money. So definitely stay tuned for my unboxing and review of that printer. I myself am super excited for the K1 Max, and I gotta say initially that I am pretty happy with this K1 Speedy. There are only a few minor things that I dislike about it or I think can be improvements. However, for a $599 printer, I think it does exceptionally well. I especially do love the design of the printer itself and I love the quality of the materials that it's built on. So definitely worth it to check it out if you're willing to spend the $599. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and I may do a side-by-side -side comparison when I do get my P1P just to see how it performs because I do wanna compare it to the P1P rather than the X1 Carbon. 
So do expect a follow-up video where I'm going to pit these two side by side and see how well they perform against each other. Now when I get the X1 Max, I'm also going to pit that one against the X1 Carbon to see how well they compare as well. Anyways, again, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please make sure you smash that like button and click subscribe. Please make sure to also ring that bell icon to get notified when I post new content. Until next time, see ya.